Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, your host, and this is, let's see, this is episode number 103 on May 6, 2015. So you can see all of our episodes at walkinpark.com, my vid blog. And uh, we're going to uh, do a lot today. We're going to go to maybe three parks, certainly get to two, hopefully three. But uh, we're going to start off at uh, Teganic Falls State Park, and there's a lot afoot there. In fact, yesterday I was up there at the Falls Overlook, and they were having a big uh, groundbreaking, as it were, or, or a dedication of the construction of a new area around the Falls Overlook. There's a whole, a whole bunch of money being poured into state parks, and you'll learn about that in this show. And uh, so why don't we just go right up there, and you'll find out a lot more about it. We'll go right to Teganic Falls Overlook. Get it right up here. A really wonderful day here in the Finger Lakes. Uh, we have, um, uh, many of us have great affection for this spot. This is one of the most photographed spots in the Finger Lakes. It is uh, a spot where if you're living here and you have family and friends visiting, this is one of the spots that you go, in addition to the Moosewood restaurant. When you might want to propose to somebody this is a very famous spot, and significant spot for thousands of people who uh, uh, propose. Uh, many people have wedding ceremonies and services here. Um, great spot for picnics, motor coach tours, but as you're looking at it, it's a sheet of asphalt and we were really, really challenged for many years how people could have such a really profound natural experience and yet all we were presenting them, that first touch point that we were offering them, was a broken up piece of asphalt. And I am so pleased to stand in front of you today and announce this project, this groundbreaking for redoing the Overlook at Teganic Falls State Park. This is project in total represents an investment. Uh, Governor Cuomo and the New York Works Project is investing $1.8 million in the redo of, this, uh, of the Overlook. And you can see the construction taking place. Uh, we also received $320,000 from the uh, uh, Green Infrastructure Grant Program that's uh, managed by the Environmental Facilities Corporation. That's to help out with uh, uh, some stormwater management, some pervious pavement. This is our opportunity to tell how we can all be more responsible in managing the natural resources that we have and their connection to Cayuga Lake. But this project in total, $1.8 million, the key elements of which are an organized parking lot. Look at when you come here, when this is done, you're actually going to be able to know where you can park and where you can't park, okay? It's going to be well organized. It's going to flow a whole lot better. On this side of the street, we'll be creating a parking area for large RVs and motor coaches, and it'll be overflow parking. On that side of, the, uh, of, of Park Road, we'll be creating uh, a much more friendly experience for people native plant gardens, interpretive uh, panels that talk about the geology, the flora, the fauna, <coughs> talking about uh, how we can be more environmentally responsibility. Uh, all of the asphalt will be permeable asphalt and there'll be permeable pavers so that that storm water is going to flow and that's what that EFC grant is for. A number of beautiful plantings. We aren't going to mess with the stone staircase. That's going to be preserved. That's a beautiful CCC air staircase. That will be preserved and tuned up. But central to all of this, and sort of the keystone to all of this, is this new three-season comfort station that we're building. Okay? So you're going to be able to come here, <coughs> use facilities in comfort. But then adjoining that and attached to that is a multi-purpose room. And that multi-purpose room can be used in, in inclement weather. And it's actually going to be housing on a seasonal basis an information kiosk with our friends from the Ithaca Tompkins County Convention and Visitors Bureau. And you'll hear more about that later. But this is our opportunity to touch people who are traveling and to help them discover other parts of the Finger Lakes. So all of this, our timeline for all of this will be uh, to complete just about this time next year. 
if we don't have a winter like we did this past winter, uh, that, that slowed us down a little bit. But we'll be working through the fall. There's probably a little bit of tune-up that'll be taking place next spring, but we expect to be in full operation mode this time uh, next year. Okay, so um, now we're going to hear from a couple of uh, dignitaries, as it were. We're going to hear from Dave Banfield, who is the chair of the Finger Lake State Parks Commission. He'll explain what that is. And then we'll also be hearing from Rose Harvey, who is the commissioner of New York State Office of Parks. And she's going to give us sort of a broader context of uh, what's happening here, why this project is happening, along with many others around the state. So uh, just stand by for a second while we bring up those folks on the screen here. Get them online here. Very good. So what we're going to do now is hear from a couple of our dignitaries. They're going to share some of their words with you. And then we're going to do a, uh, uh, the ceremonial shovel toss of the first shovel full of dirt. But more importantly, the best part of this is after that's all done, we're going to walk across the street and we're going to go look at the waterfall. Okay? And we're going to take our shovels with us, with our hard hats with us. We're going to get a photo up at the most beautiful spot. This is pretty. This is a great truck. <laughs> but we can do better on the other side of the street. So uh, please just bear with us and we're going to shift gears and walk across the street uh, after that's concluded. So um, first of all, I'd like to ask uh, Dave Banfield. Dave, if you could join me. Dave's our, our chair of the Finger Lakes Park Commission, and uh, he had a few words that he wanted to share. Um, I am chairperson of the commission. You've met Mitch and Ludy, who are two of the five members that are on the Finger Lakes Park Commission. We're a um, group that represents the Finger Lakes region, 11 regions in the state. And uh, we meet at least four times a year. We approve the budgets uh, for the parks uh, and that goes to Albany, that the governor and the, and the staff. Uh, and we serve under Rose, who is uh, very capable. And Fred, is, uh, is uh, he's acknowledged a lot of people that did a lot of work here, but Fred is the mover and the pusher. He is really a wonderful addition to our park staff. and. Here. It's just great. I want to welcome you all to this, uh, to this event. It's a spectacular event uh, for the groundbreaking of this overlook. Um, I'm extremely pleased by the effort of all those that are responsible to, for this park and for this event taking place today. On behalf of the commission, I thank you for your help, your support, and we pledge to continue to make the Finger Lakes region the best in beauty and staff. Thank you very much for showing us. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce our leader, Rose Hart. Thank you. And um, talking about awesome, Fred Fong, Dave Banfield, our commissioners, our park staff, our park police, all and all of our partners here today, because you all have made this happen, and you make everything that happens in our park system in your area, and we really, really, really appreciate it. Um, I I'm here today to put this in context to Governor Cuomo's Vision 2020, for parks, which he just released, I think we have copies for all of you, um, about three weeks ago. And it's exciting news, the 2020 plan will make $900 million available to all our parks throughout the system. And what could be better than an example like this, uh, and I, we have to also remember that waterfall here, not and the truck that's going to make it happen <laughs> uh, and making it happen soon. Um, just as a little background for our park system, which I don't, I think all of you all know because you enjoy it, is it is the oldest, it is one of the largest, if not the largest, it is the most developed in terms of services that we provide to all of our visitors. 
And it is also, unfortunately, for the last 40 years, been a park system that was never in the capital budget in Albany. So it never got any capital uh, on a sustained and major way to take care of it, fix it, and improve it. And as a result, uh, really in the last 15, 20 years, it's a park system that was a bit in crisis. It was, you had many buildings being boarded up, many places inaccessible, sewer, water, basic in infrastructure didn't work, and it was proposed 88 parks were going to be closed in the park system because of this infrastructure problem. We had a $1.3 billion infrastructure backlog. So upon taking office, Governor Cuomo really reversed this trend, and I remember when I first met with him, the first thing he said is, we're not closing any parks. Not only are we not closing them, we're going to make them more welcoming, more accessible, we're going to provide more events, and uh, he was true to his word. In the second year of his administration, when the state was looking at a $2 billion deficit, he made $90 million available in the capital budget, and then going forward, he's made $90 million available for the last three years and for the four years going forward in his next term. He's also put our parks in I, I Love New York campaign, and you've seen Watkins Glen, you've seen your falls have actually been in the I Love New York campaign. More events, more opportunity for visitors, and he wants to, to connect many more people to the parks. So it all starts with capital dollars. The 900 million is really the 90 million each year for a total of seven years, three years back, four years forward. So that's 630 million. And then we have great partners with our sister agencies, whether it's the Department of Transportation, whether it is Climate Resiliency, who's making another 200 million on special projects. And then, and I thank the commission here, we've got private fundraising of about 39 million uh, that is gonna go in and be matched by uh, our state money. Um, the plan, this plan is not only to fix but, and restore, but it's to rejuvenate, to re rehabilitate, to transform our state parks. And in the process of doing that, bring them into the 21st century, make them more relevant to the new demographic and the uses the, of the 21st century, and always energy efficiency, always climate resiliency, and always operational sustainability as we go forward. And it will all be in partnership with all of you. Okay. All right, everybody. One, two, three. Plug it in. All right, one, two, three. Hey! Okay, so that'll give you a little bit of an idea of what uh, is in the works. The, uh, there were a number of more speakers, partners, and so forth from uh, various agencies that are collaborating on this project at Teganic Falls. And um, one of them is uh, TCAT. They're going to have a um, buses to the parks called Bus to Nature and uh, enjoy beautiful Tompkins County seven days a week. So this is uh, working in with the state park funding um, starting on the weekends, Sunday, May 17th through Sunday, September, or Saturday and Sunday, starting Sunday, May 17th through Sunday, September 6th this year, there'll be bus, a bus trip, bu Route 22, look it up on uh, the TCAT website, that will go to Teganic Falls, Cayuga Nature Center, Cass Park, uh, Downtown Commons, Buttermilk Falls, and Robert Treeman State Parks. So, and then in um, the, starting in June 22nd, Monday, June 22nd, 
it'll be going Monday through Friday as well. So look up that schedule. Get yourself a TCAT pass or something like that. And um, go on out to the parks. You don't have to have a car. And that's the whole purpose because there's a lot of people that can't get to our parks. And we want to make them more accessible. So now we're going to go to Robert Treeman State Park. And, um, well, first we'll still stay at Teganic to introduce what we're doing here. But on Saturday I was there at I Love My Park Day. So uh, we'll go there. But the other thing that we have in this region are really passionate friends and neighbors. Uh, this past Saturday, this park and many uh, parks in the Finger Lakes region hosted I Love My Park Day. And I've got a top of line report on that. We had 413 volunteers giving of their time, their sweat, and piling up, uh, uh, planting trees, planting flowers, moving mulch, assembling picnic tables, it was a really, really significant day for us. And I really want to thank the people in the Finger Lakes who get involved with uh, I Love My Park Day. I want to thank you all for coming to the State Park. I uh, appreciate you coming today. And I'm quite sure all the visitors that have been here and will be in the near future will appreciate all the work that you do. Um, anything that you want to volunteer for, you can call the office and they may have some light duty things that you can do. Um, I believe we have some trees and other things that need to be done. And I will let this gentleman here instruct you of where to go and what we need to have done. Hi folks, thanks for coming this morning. My name is Rick. I'm the second in command for the five parks, which comprise the Ithaca Area Parks Group. Uh, those of you that may know Jim Dunn, who is the first in command park manager, he is uh, leading a group at Two Rivers State Park in Waverly this morning, so he, he will try to be by later. Um, those of you, I see some t-shirts from last year. Um, you'll be happy to know that we will not be carrying anything in, into the board. <laughs> uh, as, as Bob said, uh, what we're going to be working on is our new campsite area. I don't know how many of you noticed it when you came in probably saw there's some trees over there we're going to plant. Uh, we need to have a crew that's going to go through and uh, stay in the new signposts that are in. Uh, we've got some other signs that need to go in. And we've also, um, if, if we have time and the people, uh, we're going to dismantle uh, some former sites that we are taking offline uh, because of the new sites. So uh, tell me what you're doing here, Nate. Well, we're planting trees today. I'm just kind of a worker bee, but um, just putting the trees in, backfilling them, 
mulching yeah. them. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. It's the yeah. second year we've done this. Last uh -huh. year, they worked on the trails a lot, and we put together picnic tables. Right. Out the old mill. Right. So real nice thing for me to do. My wife's somewhere somewhere around here. A couple little girls. Yeah. It's a really good thing. Yeah. 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 This is our. This is our I see you have last committee. year's T-shirt on there. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's great. 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 So it's uh, it's really wonderful that you uh, come out and uh, help out the park and in, uh, in the season here, and it's a real push to get the get the park ready for the season and now we have this new campground loop and so forth so it's real so nice well it's the least we can do we come here multiple times a week with our kids wow especially using the playground and the swimming holes so. right all right 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 well thank you very much for helping us out on i love my park day at robert treeman state park sure thing. You're all from Wells College? Yes. And you're in a group that's uh, called FORCES yep. in New York State Parks? FORCES stands for Friends of Recreation, uh, Conservation. Conservation and Environmental Stewardship. Oh, there's the t-shirt. <laughs> oh, okay, good, so it's good. It's a state-funded club, and there are a lot of colleges that are starting this FORCES club, and what we do is we go out and we try to help state parks by volunteering our time, doing any little extra jobs that they've got around. That's and fantastic. they really appreciate it. That's fantastic. Well, we really are uh, friends of Robert H. Treeman State Park and the State Park itself. Thank you very much for coming down from Wells College to help us out on this, this day. It really, it really carries things forward for getting ready for this, this season. Thank you. Yes, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. Great, great. <laughs> okay. Many of us, our relatives, our grandfathers and fathers built some of this, so it's real important to maintain it for the next generation and obviously the so thank you again there's some more food up here uh, i don't want to take it home so thank you again <laughs>not only are we heading out in the parks but things are coming up in the parks and this is spring wildflower season in the woods and along our trails so let's just take a look, look at a real quick video about some of the flowers you might see out along the trail now Some early woodland wildflowers in upstate New York are called spring ephemerals. They bloom and raise their leaves before the trees overhead leaf out, taking advantage of abundant light and warmth before the overhead foliage blocks most of the sun's rays for the rest of the season. By June, most spring ephemerals have completely disappeared above ground. Other woodland wildflowers are known as shade endurers. Though they send up their foliage and flowers quickly, they spend the rest of the season maturing their fruit and storing energy in their roots for the demands of next year's burst of spring growth. Okay, so that was pretty quick, but um, those are some of the things you're going to see out there. And there'll be a whole parade throughout the rest of the month and even into June of the spring wildflowers. And of course, then it'll be followed by summer wildflowers, although they're not quite as profuse because the the trees have closed in overhead is not a much, as much uh, light available to the forest floor. Many of our, our spring ephemerals will disappear completely from the surface. Now we're going to pop over to Watkins Glen. On Sunday I was at Watkins Glen State Park and I was delivering a load of books. I used to sell my book about the parks, about that park in the gift shop there. And I went up in the gorge and the gorge was halfway open. Now you get up about halfway at an area called Central Cascade and it's closed from there on 
because at Rainbow Falls there's about 30 inches of ice on the trail still because of our hard winter. But uh, with this warm weather, that's melting. So maybe they will have it open all the way in the gorge by this weekend. Don't know. But it's uh, at least up halfway, and maybe it'll be more. So let's go to Watkins Glen State Park. Get us up the next video here. And uh, just some, uh, some of the things. <laughs> That's all we have time for today, and uh, go out there and enjoy the parks. Be safe. Uh, check yourself for ticks when you get home. Do the safety things that are recommended for that. So we'll see you again. If you want to see this, uh, any of our episodes, that are walkinpark.com. So we'll see you again soon.